All right, so today I got a nice little treat for you guys. So here's the old block. Actually, this is the current block um, with all with the polycarbonate sleeves and uh, the headers. So this is temporarily off the engine right now, and we have a cutout block. The reason why I'm doing a cutout block is because the timing on this engine is seriously messed up. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know what the difference is between my uh, mock-up, my rigging in Blender versus the actual real-life final products. I'm still trying to figure that out. I did find out that the crankshafts were off, so they were offset just a tiny bit. I fixed that, but it's still not the right timing. So I think the same problem is on the camshaft as well, inherently. So we have to fix that. But yeah, this is the um, cutout design, so you can see what's going on in there. So you can see the diaphragms. And uh, I wanted to talk about that really quick. One of the cool things about those diaphragms is that one of the latest, like, breakthroughs that I've had is that you can use a diaphragm pusher, is what I call this. This is one of the three tools that come with this engine. And um, once I do release the files, which I'm going to do once I figure out all of these kinks. But, uh, so this is a diaphragm pusher. You, it has a retainer on it too, but I don't have it with me. And... What you do is you put your diaphragm on there before you put a hole in it and you can stretch it. All right, you screw it like this and you push this plunger out, which is the same shape as the piston. And what that does is it is it stretches the diaphragm. And then what you do is you heat it up with a heat gun and it will retain its shape. And you can go so crazy that you can make things like this. This is a 3D printed diaphragm. It's called the sombrero. Now, you notice it doesn't have a hole in it, because I don't think this will work, because it collapses down on itself. Um, but yeah, that has a tremendous stroke, you know, because that's what's causing basically what your stroke is, is the amount that your diaphragm is able to stretch. So I would have been able to get consistently is something like this, maybe a little bit more. And um, this is about a, what it equals out to be is about a 25 millimeter stroke. So this is what I've been using, and so that's pretty cool. This is one of the other tools that comes with it, for instance. This is, you put the sleeve in there, see it's got the sleeve keys uh, and the, sleeve, the same profile as the, as the sleeve as the engine does, and it's got a, for it meant for you to put it into a chuck, and it allows you to sand the inside of the, uh, the sleeve. So, yeah. You can see the polycarbonate uh, con rods. These are iGUS pistons. And that's pretty uh, pretty cool. So I wanted to also, we're going to see it running, but I wanted to show you guys how I time it. Even though the timing on this one is so messed up, you can still get away with getting it to run pretty good. Um, with just the, uh, the amount of adjustability that you have on this engine. So what I'm going to do is, right now it's, I think it's retarded like three, um, the three tooth teeth so let's see one see and i'm just moving the crankshaft gear while holding the camshaft gear so right now it is one two three teeth retarded and you'll see why here in just a minute okay so i'll put the flywheel back on and i also am going to be doing a trip typical like, no, like how a normal camshaft on a race car or a racing camshaft has a adjustability where you have three screws or four screws and you can rotate the camshaft gear on a disc and then tighten it down so you can get even more finite adjustability than, you know, using teeth like that. So, uh, all right, let's go ahead and fire it up. And uh, what I like to do right now, it has the, the four to one on it. What I like to do is test one cylinder at a time. And that's a one of the reasons why I went with a individual cylinder head like this. Um, so that you can have individual adjustability. Now I do want to make a head where it's all in one and it doesn't have these valves. I'm going to do that around the time that I make the camshaft for commodity use, basically like a camshaft that doesn't have a lot of, um, uh, what do you call it, doesn't have a lot of lift. It's not, a, it's not a performance camshaft, so it'll be efficient. 
So until then, though, this is the racing setup. This has the big cam and, and the single heads. And the other reason why I do the single heads is so that when I'm pushing these diaphragms, sometimes you can mess up and overextend them or overheat them and warp them and, and cause them to have a bad design. Like this one right here uh, is not the most ideal. You see how it doesn't retain its shape very well? So by having these single diaphragms across the entire head like I did before, or having a single head for multiple cylinders, it caused me to where if I made a mistake, I had to reprint the entire gasket. So now I have individual diaphragms like this for each head. And it allows for as if they wear differently as well. Um, you can, you can uh, replace them individually. And there's lots of other benefits as well that I'm noticing. So you have, uh, you have that. So let's go ahead and try the first cylinder first. All right, so that's not the power stroke, as this is a four cylinder, a four stroke. So we're gonna go ahead and rotate it around until we get to the power stroke. Boom! Right there. So you can you can see it's pretty it's timed pretty well on the, on the first cylinder. As soon as it gets to the top, it's past top dead center right now. And then as soon as it gets a little bit past top dead center, it activates, and that's what you want. So that's perfect, perfect timing on the first cylinder. Let's go ahead and try the second cylinder now. So you can see it's opening late. It should have already opened by now. Pistons past top dead center. We're looking at this piston here. So pistons past top dead center. And right now it should, right there, it's while the air is coming out, it should still be in the stroke, but it's already past it because it's firing too late. So we know that we need to retard the timing at some, at least at some point, because this valve here will let you adjust positive timing but you can't go down any further than what it is now. So we have to retard the timing on the gear. So before even checking the next cylinder, we know that we have to go back in timing on the main gear, which I already know is three teeth back. But what you would normally do is walk it back, right? You'd walk it back one tooth at a time until you get to the compensation that you need that you can then positively adjust the other cylinders because if you remember we just checked the first cylinder and it was perfect so one two three so the first cylinder was perfect so now that we retarded the timing the first cylinder is going to be firing early which is not good. So we, we can compensate that though by positively advancing the timing with the timing adjustment valve. So we'll go ahead and put the first cylinder intake back on, give it some pressure, and we'll just go ahead and try it without adjusting it. So it's firing way early. It's coming up in the power stroke. It won't even let it go, see? All right, so what we do is we just back this valve off. And there we go. A little less. It'll actually run. All right. So we know that that one's good. Now let's try cylinder two, which was firing too early before. Let me see where it's at. We're looking at this one. Perfect, look at that. Right after top dead center. All right, let's try cylinder number three. That's this one here. 
All right. Right after top dead center. Perfect. Let's try the last one. Alright, so that one's firing, looks like a little bit late, we'll back it off just a little bit, there we go. Alright, so now, we can plug in the 1 to 4. And that is how you tune the inline four cross plane performance engine from Chris Genda. Peace out, guys. Next video, I'll show you guys the dyno, and hopefully, I'll have all this timing stuff figured out. I'll get this first release, and we can start making add ons like the tubular exhaust and turbos and all kinds of stuff. So, just give me a little bit of time to get the kinks worked out on the initial engine, and we'll be good to go. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and stay tuned for the next video. Peace.